Hey cats, what's happening? Gotta get the bugs off the window. Gotta keep it clean so I can see where I'm going. Actually, I see over top of this windshield, so I like it. What's happening, cats? Welcome to another wonderful summer day. Closing down the end of the summer here. But there's still a lot of good riding weather, and I've been getting some miles in on the bike. Uh, just the other day, I mean, it was before 11 a.m., I, I had almost 60 miles on the bike already. So, yeah, life is good. Um, you know, and then I was thinking about my speed, because, you know, I, I'm no speed demon at my age, 68 years old, but... Um, I do like to my fast acceleration, you know, taking off and hearing the roar of the pipes. <laughs> and I, usually I run about 10 miles over the speed limit because I feel safe that I'm not going to get a citation at that point. Um, from what I understand, anything over 10 miles over the speed limit, you're at risk of getting a citation. And I don't know how true that is. Uh, I'm sure they could cite you if you're doing five miles over the speed limit, depending on where you're at. But, you know. And then sometimes I push it a little harder because, you know, there's places you, you know you feel safe when you're out in a rural area and there's that big straightaway and, you know, there's no cops anywhere around here. So you open it up. Sometimes you hit 70, 75. Um, I rarely do 80 mile an hour anymore when I travel cross country and I hit the highway. I've been known to hold it at 80 for <laughs> a good part of the day, you know, just to get some miles under me. Uh, but and, and then when you're out west, you know, the speed limit sometimes is 70, 70 mile an hour. So, you know, you can do 80 and still be safe without worrying about getting a citation. But anyway, some people really have the need for higher speeds. And... Uh, you know, I was reminded of my son. Uh, he's always had that, that adrenaline for speed and, and more, I, I guess, more of the, of the danger aspect. Uh, he's a veteran of Iraq, uh, you know, and, and came home with a Purple Heart. Uh, so he does have that, uh, you know, he, he used to have a, a, a Yamaha crotch rocket that you know he would wheelie and and go you know like a bat out of heck down the road uh, he let me ride it a couple times it was a very very fast bike uh, very fast uh, and, and <laughs> just not my thing though you know hunched over the handlebars and you know trying to crane my neck up with a full face helmet on it wasn't my my deal I tend to like to take things a little easier Especially at my age. And when I was younger, it was a different story. Anyway, I went over to his place for the, the Labor Day weekend. And he had some friends over. And they were doing some four-wheeling. Now, he's got a four-wheeler. He's got a uh, uh, golf cart. And he also has like a dune buggy thing. That, you know, it's, it's not like a road-worthy dune buggy. But it, it's a two-seater and it, it, it goes. Uh, and then his friend had a uh, Yamaha 1000 side-by-side, a two-seater, and also had a four-wheeler. So there was plenty of uh, machines there for everybody to ride. It wasn't my thing, though. No, I was there for the food because he had used his smoker and done a, a, a couple of pork butts, and then he did pulled pork. And uh, ugh, that's my thing, the food. You know, and his wife made homemade mac and cheese, and, and they had all kinds of size, watermelon, and I mean, it was a good picnic. Good, good eating. Well, you know, the guys and the kids were all out riding all through the trails, and he lives in a very rural area. Uh, a lot of farm agricultural land that's all owned by family, too. So it, it's all open. <laughs> open game for, for riding, and that's why they were all there with their off-road machines. And uh, his friend came in, who was probably about a 40, 40-some-year-old 40 guy, 
And he says, Mr. Avery, would you like to uh, like me to give you a ride in my side by side? You know, and so I said, yeah, yeah, sure, okay. I mean, why not? You know, I'll go, I'll go for a ride with you. I'm thinking, okay, this guy's a dad. He's got kids. You know, he's a family man. Yeah, it'll, it'll be nice. So I got in the side by side with him, and I look over, and he, he's not putting his uh, harness on. You know, there's like a five buckle harness thing that you put on, and he didn't put his on. And so I thought, oh well, it's just going to be a nice little ride. I'm not putting mine on either. And uh, the trail starts out through the woods. He's got, my, my son has trails all, that wind all through the woods. And the, is, there's a lot of trees, so you can't go super fast. And, and he wasn't, we were just kind of going, weaving in and out of the trees and going through all the trails back in the woods. There was a hill climb, a pretty steep hill that we went up and came down that way. That was fun. Uh, but then we exited out into the ag fields or the corn fields. Now there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of acres of corn there. And in between the corn fields, there's like gas line roads or, or right of ways. So they're big wide strips that are mowed uh, and they, they don't plant crops on those, those uh, utility lines. But you know, it's a gas line, so they kind of roll and they got some curves and twists in them and they, they go, you know, quite a ways through these through these huge cornfields. Well, he comes out of the woods and we get out into onto the gas line and he just floored this thing. Well, it was like being strapped to a missile. You know, I was socked back in the seat and the, the thing was fishtailing and, and I mean, we just took off like a bat out of hell. At that point, I started thinking maybe I should have put my harness on you know maybe it would have been a wise idea well he kept going faster and faster we we're going down these that, and, and I mean this is not a road it's a gas line so best way I could describe it is if you've ever watched the uh, Baja 500 you know where the Baja buggies are just launching and and going like you know 90 mile an hour through the desert yeah, that's what it was like. I mean, we were going down through these dips, coming up over these hills, you know, just, um, you go down into the dip and you, you feel that compression of the G, and then you come up out of there and you come over the lip and you're just like weightless until you, you land again. And then he'd go around the corner sideways, and, and we're, going, we're going over 60 miles an hour now. And, and at sometimes the the tires would grab, so the machine would start like you know bouncing sideways as we're going around this curve. I'm hanging on for dear life. I I didn't think I was going to survive. Well, we got to the end, and he turned around, and I thought, okay, good, it's over. No, it was only beginning. Uh, he really opened it up after that, and uh, I thought I was going to die. Now, you know, when you look at these side-by-sides, this Yamaha 1000, uh, it has a roll cage, you know, built into it. And I, I'm thinking to myself, okay, they put a roll cage on these things for a reason. Because they roll. They also put the full harness thing in there for a reason. To hold you in there because they know that you can be thrown out of there. And then in a lot of cases, people wear helmets in there. Now, grant, grant it that the roll cage isn't going to save your life. The harness isn't going to save your life. Nor is a helmet going to save your life. But there are safety precautions you can take that, that might help you to survive the accident. Now, fortunately, we didn't have an accident. But what was going through my mind was... Oh my gosh, this thing's gonna flip. I'm gonna be a paraplegic. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna go to heaven right now today. Uh, but it didn't happen. We got back in one piece, and uh, I was quick to climb out of that machine. It's it's different when you're the passenger. If you're the driver of the machine, you feel fully confident and know what you're doing, and you got no fear. But when you're a passenger, 
it's a completely different story. Now, have you ever rode on the back of somebody's motorcycle? Yeah, it's completely different than if you're actually driving the motorcycle. It's a whole different story if you're a passenger. And that's pretty much the way I felt about riding in this side-by-side. -side. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I should learn my lesson, you know, about being a passenger in those, those machines. You know, I just watched a video last week where a guy had one of these side-by-sides and he he lost it and it rolled and his girlfriend was strapped into the thing and uh, she didn't survive she died so they are dangerous machines and they are real dangerous when you push your luck with them and so uh, you know I don't know <laughs> I didn't think the I got, actually, I got back in the house after after my ride. Uh, got back into the air conditioning and everything, and the, the ladies were in there. And they said, how was your ride? I said, oh, yeah, it was great. Uh, but I said, your husband is he's, he's crazy. And she said, yeah, I know. She said, I refuse to ride with him. I absolutely refuse. And I'm trying to get him to sell that machine because I don't want him to kill himself. But I refused to ride with him. And I was like, oh, well, I wish you would have told me that before I took my ride. <laughs> anyway, that's just one more adventure to chalk up to my life. And uh, I don't regret it. I mean, it was fun, but uh, whew, boy, oh boy. So I'm going to get on two wheels today where I feel very confident and uh, do some riding again well thanks for watching if you enjoy my video give me a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe to my channel and join me for this ride until next time cats ride hard and die free <laughs>